I have to say this with a little bit of caution, having lived this long and been in the industry this long and seen the cycles that we go through, I would say that the one that we're in right now is quite favorable for it to last for several years, a long time. There are craft dis uh, distilleries that are starting up throughout the country that are uh, going to be some of the driving forces to keep bourbon viable. I think that the mixologists and the people that are in the trade are going beyond just making money off of a commodity. They're really educating people and building that enthusiasm level to a point where the younger drinkers, and I'm not talking about 21, but pretty close to that, 21 to 35 year olds are really developing an affinity for it. I mean, we're, when we go out and we, we go to bars and we're, we're bars and retail stores and we're conducting tastings, people are coming in and asking us questions that only we thought about asking each other. Where was that barrel stored? You know, what's the proof on it? Uh, was it in the top rack? Was it in the bottom rack? Um, what makes it unique? These are, are questions that we would usually sit around and say, well, that's pretty good for a 13-year-old bourbon. What are we going to do with that? Put it in a, in a private selection? We're going to put it in a small batch? You know, and they're looking at it and saying, you know, we could take some of your 10 recipes that aren't in your small batch and make another one that's pretty good. So that message is getting out that's kind of dispelled the blended whiskey theory that, that's been very helpful for helping us in the bourbon uh, resurgence, if you will. I call it the bourbon renaissance. I mean, it's pretty cool.